Hi, this is Leonie from Spines and Splines. We recently moved from Australia to Ireland with our greyhound Tom, and this pile of blankets and thin mattresses on the floor wasn't a great dog bed. As I'm learning how to build things, I thought a new bed would be the perfect place to start. I carried a piece of 18mm plywood home on the tram one day and cut it into four long slices with my circular saw to make the sides of the bed. I cut one of these in half to make the shorter edges and cut the other down to make a box divider and lid as I needed the bed to double as storage for Tom's coats. I bought another piece of plywood and cut some rails to attach the bed slats to and cut some thin scraps of plywood to make the box base and lid. Because it was summer in Dublin, I had to finish up my cuts and move inside for a while. I glued and screwed the bed sides together and was going to hide the screws with dowels but changed tactics when I noticed this was holding me up and stopping me from finishing the bed. I used wood filler and sanded it back instead, which doesn't look as good, but it got the job done. I used a hand planer to knock back some of the sharper edges. We had a cheap wobbly shelf in our kitchen that I sadly sacrificed to make the slats for the bed. Ireland can be pretty humid, so I wanted the bed raised for airflow reasons, and I also wanted our robot vacuum cleaner to be able to fit underneath it, which is a common theme with everything I make. We love that robot vacuum cleaner. At the same time I glued together the plywood for the box lid, then finished all the plywood with a few coats of Danish oil. I pre-drilled and screwed the slats down to the bed base using Tom's outside bed as a workbench. The top of the box is a cushion held in place with some plywood edging, so the next step was to glue that edging up and clamp it while it's set, then glue and screw from the underside of the box lid. The legs for the bed had to be heavy and strong as Tom is a 35 kilo greyhound so I made them from a human sized sheet of 12 mm plywood stacked and glued together then painted around the exposed edges for protection and a bit of colour. When the paint was dry I screwed the bed down onto the legs.
With the bed frame done, it was time to move on to the mattress. This was sewn from one piece of fabric in a pillowcase style, measured to fit the base. I double rolled, ironed and pinned the two exposed hems before sewing the two side seams. Then ironed and sewed across each corner at a 45 degree angle to create box edges that give the mattress its height. I wanted the bedding to be washable and inexpensive, so turned these two awful Euro 50 IKEA pillows into one, folded up a super king size duvet, and this was the perfect amount of stuffing. Before I finished the box lid, I had Tom do a test run of the bed. He was having difficulty getting in and out and turning around 10 million times with the four edges, so I cut off two of the sides with my circular saw. I did this at an angle and rounded off all the sharp bits so that it would be nice and comfortable. When that was done, I moved on to the lid cushion, which I made from a piece of kangaroo leather, an old worn out yoga mat, and a scrap of plywood. I trimmed back the corners of the letter as I went so that there was less bulk. I was going to use a staple gun for this but couldn't find it despite the fact that it was sitting in plain sight the whole time. So use tacks and a hammer instead, which was much more difficult. The integrated box turned out to be a great addition and Tom loves the bed. While this sleeping, I've also made a video of dog themed yoga stretches, so check it out. Please hit the like button, subscribe, share and comment if you like this video. And stay tuned to Spines and Splines for more creative projects and simple exercises that you can do in your studio or workspace. Cheers!